Hello, Internet, and welcome to Behind the Meme. Today, we have a look at the history and origin of emojis. Now, this is a topic that very few, if any of my viewers, have requested. But I felt it would be interesting to look into the history of what has essentially become a part of everybody's language in today's digital world. Let's face it, they are used within practically every social media platform. They can be as simple as having a little smiley face indicating an emotion one feels when they receive a positive message, or they can be as complex as having harmless vegetables representing a certain part of the male anatomy, a part that rhymes with mick, or lick, or stick. The dick. I'm talking about dicks. The eggplant emoji is used for big black dick. There, I said it. I started to realize for being a thing that I and many fellow humans use on a nearly daily basis, I had very little understanding to what their history was and it kind of bugged me. So I wanted to dive in and learn a bit more about emojis. The emoji was first born in Japan, a country that may be most popular for being the mecca of technology and also strange vending machines. I mean, they sell almost everything imaginable in vending machines in Japan. Umbrellas? Check. Weird fish soup stuff check used women's panties check i guess i don't know why but they do so check the point that I'm trying to make is Japan is a pretty interesting place, to say the least. They have their own trends and styles that other countries don't always understand, but that's kind of what makes them special. Emojis are one of those things that started off as a trend in Japan and took a bit of time for the rest of the world to catch on to. You see, in the late 90s, there was a huge trend of Japanese mobile phone users sending image-based messages to each other. In fact, it was such a large trend that Japanese mobile phone companies saw a market and a way to give their customers more of what they wanted. So they attempted to develop ways to incorporate image-based messages within their phones to appeal to their customers. But there was one man who saw the bigger picture of things. A man who goes by the name of Shigetaka Kurita. Hoi. I don't know why, but I felt like his name had to be said that way. Is that racist? I didn't mean to be racist. I'm sorry. Anyways, he realized that with text messages, there was the missing element of human emotion that couldn't exactly be expressed with letters and numbers. For example, if I send a text to my ex-girlfriend saying I'm gonna kill you for cheating on me, it sounds super creepy and scary. But if you add an emoji at the end of the text, it's cool. No restraining order or anything. Emojis make everything better. But before emojis, aside from simple faces using colons and brackets, there was no way to visually express the emotion behind the message. So Shigitaka Kurita took inspirations from the weather reports that he would see that used the sun to communicate good weather and the mangas that he read that would sometimes Sometimes use symbols to express a character's emotion without using text. He created an initial set of 176 symbols that were very basic due to technology limitations, but allowed for the user to express things in a visual way that basic text couldn't. He called his new creation Emoji, with E meaning picture and Moji meaning character, and released them in 1999 making them available through the mobile phone company NTT Docomo which Shigetaka was working for at the time. His images quickly became a hit and began to be heavily used by Japanese mobile phone users in the following years creating a trend in the country. It wasn't until 2007 with the release of the first iPhone that the emoji seeds were planted to begin to spread beyond the land of strange vending machines. You see, Apple was releasing their first cell phone and wanted to break into the gigantic Asian mobile phone market. So they adopted the popular emoji symbols and incorporated them within their operating system to help appeal to the Asian customers. First being released in November of 2000. 2008 on the 2.2 operating system. Apple even initially <laughs> hid the emojis from users in other countries other than Japan, but eventually people discovered that by using applications they would be able to access the emojis within their phones. This development caused non-Asian users to use the emojis pretty often, signifying to Apple that there was a demand for emojis outside the Asian countries. But it wasn't until 2011 with the release of iOS 5 that Apple officially released the emojis for all users, and since then they have been adopted by every mobile phone company and used everywhere. I mean, we can't escape the damn things. Now there are as many as over 1800 emojis that are supported on various platforms. We have symbols to express everything from human 
emotions to mm. food to poop for some reason that I'm still not sure of. Even paper clips, which I can guarantee nobody in the history of mankind has ever used. Emojis have now become ingrained within our culture for better or worse. At first, I hated the damn things. I don't know exactly why, but they bugged me. Since then, although I don't like admitting it, I use them pretty often. Love them or hate them, in 2017, you cannot escape the emoji. They're on clothes, incorporated within art, plastered on various items. Basically, anything and everything you can imagine has emoji variations. It has even gotten to the point that celebrities or so-called celebrities create their own apps and collections of emojis that you're able to buy and use. So if you're a fan of Kim Kardashian and enjoy talking to your friends about your slut-like activities, there's now a set of emojis that allows you to communicate in the trashiest ways possible. Hell, if you're such a big fan of Drake that you're willing to go to the next level and buy his dad's emoji set, you can do that. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Drake's dad has his own emoji set. It's only 99 cents. And of course, no popular trend would be complete without its own special holiday, right? Right. I mean, there's a holiday for beer can appreciation, bubble baths, and even toothaches. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. So why not have a holiday for emojis? World Emoji Day falls on July 17th because the calendar emoji in the Apple set of emojis shows the date, July 17th. So naturally, that became the holiday, complete with its own official anthem. Wait until you guys get a load of this. July 17th. Yeah, so that's a thing, I guess. So you're probably thinking that's it, right? I mean, how can you top a holiday? Well, I wish that were the case. Mark your calendars for August 4th, 2017, the day of the apocalypse. That's the day that the emoji movie comes out in movie theaters. No, seriously, they're making a movie about emojis. Now, I'm not one to judge things before I see them, so let's look at the trailer. Let's give it a chance. For all we know, it's gonna be the next Toy Story. So I told management, I can't work like this. These lights, I'm melting in here. This is such a load of... Uh, no, go ahead. Finish that sentence. Okay, it's not gonna be the next Toy Story. I'm fairly certain we can say that with confidence after seeing that trailer. That was very stupid to say, and I hate myself very much for saying it. So there you have it. Emojis have gone from a region-specific trend in Japan to conquering the whole world and becoming ingrained in our culture for better or worse. But hey, that's the internet for you. And on the internet, memes are king. Thank you all so very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can catch my next video and stay up to date on all your favorite memes and trends. Who knows, you may learn about something you never knew about before. I'll catch you beautiful people next time. It's World Emoji Day. It's World